Matthew chapter 20. Let's start there, verse 1. It's a familiar parable. It's called the parable of the workers in the vineyard. I'm going to read it for you if you want to follow along. The kingdom of heaven <clears throat> is like this. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire men to work in his vineyard. Now he agreed to pay them a denarius for the day and sent, then sent them into his vineyard. About the third hour he went out and saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing. And he told them, he said, you also go and work in my vineyard and I will pay you whatever's right. So they went. He went out again about the sixth hour and the ninth hour and did the same thing. And then about the eleventh hour he went out and found still others standing around. And he asked them, um, why have you been standing here all day long doing nothing? No, well, because no one has hired us, they answered. And he said to them, well, you also go and work in my vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, call the workers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last ones hired and going on to the first. The workers who were hired about the eleventh hour came and each received a denarius. So when those came who were hired first, they expected to receive more. But each one of them also received a denarius. When they received it, they began to grumble against the landowner. These men who were hired last worked only one hour, they said, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the, weir of the work and the heat of the day. But he answered one of them, Friend, am I not being unfair to you? Didn't you agree to work for a denarius? Take your pay and go. I want to give the man who, has hired, who was hired last the same as I gave you. Don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? Or... Are you envious because I'm generous? So the last will be first, the first will be last. <clears throat> Let's pray. <clears throat> Our Father, we are thankful, Lord, today for the opportunity we have to be able to look into your word. And Father, here, what we have before us, I, <clears throat> I sense, Lord, is a, is a great and a really interesting study of the principles of the kingdom. Now, Father, you, you know our hearts, you know our minds, you know our spirits, you know what our week has been like, you know what our past few days have been like, and Father, you know what, what we are anticipating for tomorrow and the, and the coming days ahead. And, and Father, I pray, Lord, that you would guide and direct us and lead us today according to that which you have prepared for us as you know our days. And Father, we're all different. Lord, some have had a difficult last couple of weeks or even months. Now, Father, some are <clears throat> preparing for what might be difficult days ahead. But Father, whatever our condition, whatever our state, wherever we find ourselves, Father, I pray, Lord, that you would guide us and grant to us a sense of the anointing, the sense of the strength, a sense of the, of the food from your word that we need today to meet the tasks that are at hand. Father, some you've blessed richly with good days and and, and wonderful things surrounding them. And Father, joy and peace and, and happiness and, and, and such blessing. And Father, we just, we're thankful, Lord, for that. And we ask, Father, that you would continue. Father, we recognize that the deep water makes the sailor. And Father, we just would cast all our cares upon you this morning as we cast off into the deep. Father, we want to ride the wind, surf on the waves. We want to let our little sailboat free. Father, we want to move out of the harbor. And Father, we want to cast off the lines and we want to draw up the anchor. And Father, we want to set sail to those destinations, Father, spiritually that you have prepared for us. And so, Father, we commit this time into your hands. And Father, again today, I ask very humbly but very sincerely in the name of Jesus Christ 
that you might clothe yourself with this form. Lord, that you might speak through these lips. And I ask, Lord, very sincerely that no word would come from these lips except it be according to thy will. That we would know again, thus saith the Lord. So, Father, I believe this is the message you have prepared for us. And I ask, Father, that you would be, you would be the guide as it's delivered to your people. Father, we commit this time, Lord, into your hands. Father, for it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our text for the next couple of weeks is going to be this. But if I drive out demons by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. <clears throat> uh, it's an interesting thing in our journey in Christ, in the, uh, in the kingdom. You know, Jesus said, this is the message I want you to preach. The kingdom of God has come near. He said, wherever you go, this is what you say. The kingdom of God has come near. And then he said, then, then you do all this, this other stuff, you know, heal the sick and raise the dead and cleanse the leper and, you know, and cast out demons and, you know, and let your peace rest on a home and all that. And we've, we've talked about that for, for over a year now. <clears throat> but there are some subtle principles of the kingdom that are, that are kind of rising to the surface, you know, as we stir this pot, these things are kind of uh, are rising up and they're, and they're really interesting things about, well, what does that mean? The kingdom of God has come upon you. And what does that mean for, for my life? When I go someplace or when you go someplace and, and you recognize that, okay, all of a sudden, you know, um, um, people will say, you know what, I, I don't, I don't, oh, Let's, let's do an example like this. <clears throat> you go into the hospital and, and you go to see someone and, and you're thinking to yourself as you're going in there, you know, I know that this, they're in a bad way. I know this is a difficult time. It's a, it's, a, it's a really difficult situation. I wish I could do something for them. But what do you know about medicine? Well, maybe you know a little bit, but, but what, what's, what can you do that will last? Well, I can tell you what you could do. The Bible says that you can set peace into that room. You can set your peace on them. Well, you say, well, how do I do that? And what, is, what does that look like? And, you know, and, and if, if we really look at our Bible and if we really say, okay, I believe what this says, Jesus talks specifically about that in the sense of the kingdom of God. <clears throat> so where it says here, he says in verse 28 of Matthew chapter 12, he said, if I do this, if I open up this door and this happens, then understand this, the kingdom of God has come upon you. So, how do you put people under your umbrella of the kingdom of God? So the question, it, it, it's kind of framed in my mind like this. All around us, there's a huge rainstorm. The rainstorm is a rainstorm of darkness, of discouragement, of despair, of problems and trouble. And you want to come up alongside someone and you want to say, you know what? You want to share my, my umbrella just for a little while and get dry. See, the kingdom of God has come upon them because you are close to them and you got the umbrella. So that's kind of what we're looking at over the next few weeks. The principles of the kingdom of God of how does it show itself through you onto other people. Hey, that, does that not sound interesting? Sounds interesting to me, Henry. I'm liking it. <clears throat> so the first one that we're looking at here this morning is this parable of the, of the workers in the vineyard. Now, I suspect that you've probably uh, heard this before and you kind of know a little bit about this. But let's, let's, we read it already, but let's kind of go through it again. Jesus is talking here and he says this. He says, okay, you want to know about the kingdom of heaven. You want to know what it's like, uh, but I'm going to have to tell you kind of, you know, so you'll understand. And so he says, well, the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner. And the landowner went out early in the morning, okay? And, and so the kingdom of heaven is, is, is kind of like a landowner who went out early in the morning and he was looking for workers, and they had grapes to tie, and they had, they had uh, a rose to hoe, and they had weeds to pick up, and they had bugs to pick off, and, and they had all this kind of stuff that had to be done, and he needed people to help him. So he went out early in the morning to find the folks who could do the job for him. Verse 2. He agreed to pay them X dollars a day. Well, okay, for that day. It says that he agreed to pay them a penny, a denarius, which was a penny. He agreed to pay them a penny for the day 
and then sent them into his vineyard. So there was a contractual arrangement here of some sort. <clears throat> he says the kingdom of heaven is like this. It's like a guy who owned a, a, a large farm. And, and he needed workers for his farm. He needed people to help him. And he was, he was prepared to enter into a contractual arrangement with them. And he said, I will remunerate you X if you do this for this particular day. So there was an agreement struck. Well, the work was a lot of work. And uh, he didn't have enough workers. So verse 3 says, about the third hour he went and he saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing. They were just standing there. And that, that was a common habit in those days, that if you needed a job, you would go down to a certain location in the marketplace and you'd just stand there and hopefully somebody would come by and say, you know what, what are you doing standing here? Uh, would you like to come work in my berry farm for a little while? We got some strawberries to be picked and some pies to be made and we, got, we, got, we, got, we need some people in the stand. And we, how, about, how about if I paid you, you know, X pennies an hour, you'd come and, and work for me. They say, hey, that's what we're here. Okay, let's do it. So he went out on the third hour looking at the same thing, the same place. And he told them, he said, you also, I need you to go work. You know, it's a little later in the day. The day's about half done. But I, I'm going to, don't worry about it. I'm going to pay you whatever's right. And then he went out again, the sixth hour. And then he went out again in the ninth hour and did the same thing. And about the eleventh hour, he went out and found still others standing around. And he asked them, why have you been standing here all day long doing nothing? They said, well, no one has hired us. And he said to them, well, you also go and work in my vineyard. And, and so when evening came, when all the work was done, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, call the workers, pay them their wages, beginning with the last ones first hired and going on to the first ones hired. Now, it got a little tricky here after a while. He said, the workers who were hired about the 11th hour came and each received a penny, a denarius their wages, their envelope, their check. So when those who were hired first, they expected to receive more. But each one of them received also the same money. When they received it, they began to grumble against the landowner. They said, this ain't fair. We got to form a union. This ain't fair. We got to do something here that's, you know, we, we bore the heat of the day. We carried the burden. We did most of the work. Uh, this, how, uh, this is not fair. You know what I'm saying? This, this is, uh, I've done all the work, and you're paying them more money. You know, they're, they're getting paid, you know, a penny an hour, and I'm getting paid a penny a day. How fair is that, you know? And he answered them. He said, am I not being unfair to you? Didn't you agree to work for this much? Take your pay and go. I want to give the man who was hired last the same as I gave you. That's what I want to do. Don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? Or are you envious because I am so generous? Last will be first. First will be last. <clears throat> there are three questions posed here. And I want to look at these three questions because they're, they're quite interesting. In, uh, in our context of who we are. The first question comes from, uh, from verse 6. Okay, so the stage has all been set. And, uh, and the people have been hired and they've been working all day long. So as the stage is set, it says that the landower went out early in the morning to hire people for his vineyard. And then he went out again three hours later. And then he went out again six hours later. And then he went out again, it was nine hours after he first went out, and then he went out again, and we pick it up in verse 6, and now there has 11 hours have passed. So I'm guessing to myself that they were working a 12-hour shift here. This was a 12-hour workday in the vineyard under the hot sun. There's not much sun in the vineyard at 11 o'clock at night. I'm pretty sure about that. Now, I don't know that for a fact, but I'm pretty sure that in, a, in that latitude, that the sun sets about 6 o'clock. But this was a 12-hour shift, and these guys, he went then on the 11th hour after they started work. So 11 hours had passed, there was probably one hour left, and he went out there, and the first question he asked them that we're going to look at is this. He asked them this, why have you been standing here all day long doing nothing? 
Why have you been standing here all day long doing nothing? Now, the interesting thing is Jesus asked these questions in the context of what the kingdom of heaven is like. Right? So let's, let's move away from the vineyard kind of a thing and all that. But he, he posed these three questions in the context of what the kingdom of heaven might be like. So as I read that then, he, the question comes to me, Mark, why have you been standing around all day when there's work to be done in the kingdom of heaven? Right? That's kind of that's the context of what I'm thinking here. Well, you know, they, they said, well, no one has hired us, Right? That's verse 7. Look there, you can see their answer. Their answer was, well, no one has hired us, they answered. And so I'm thinking to myself, okay, now in the context of the kingdom of heaven, Jesus says, Mark, why are you standing around all day? You know, there's things to be done. There's grapes to be tied. There's, there's, there's stuff that needs to happen. Why, why are you standing around? Well, Lord, I don't know what to do. Uh, Lord, I, I know that there's things to be done, and, and I kind of feel certain urgency, and I'm here in the spot you know, in the marketplace where normally you pick your workers for today, and I've been, I've been you know, let, let's say that's the place of prayer where God puts a burden on you and God says, you know what, this is kind of what needs to happen. And we recognize, you know, that there are others who are going out from this place of prayer in this marketplace, and, they're, and they're, they seem to have a passion. They seem to understand what's going on. They seem to understand where they're, where they're going and what they're doing. But Lord, I, no one's hired me. I do not have a clear understanding of what I need to do in the kingdom. That's why I'm standing around. Because I don't know. I just don't know. Maybe, <clears throat> maybe these guys had no experience to know what to do. Maybe, maybe, maybe they didn't know that, that, you know, as the crowd was milling around, it was better to get to the front of the line. It was better to sit in the front pew. It was better to be the first one, you know, when, when, uh, when God says, and whom shall I send? Put your hand right up right now. I, got a, I want a job. I want to go someplace. And I'm not, you know, we're, as Canadians, you know, we, we recognize this and it's kind of, it's almost humorous now in Cuba when we go because the first year, you, you know, um, everybody was kind of, the altar call came and was, well, you know, and all of a sudden the, the Cubans made the rush to the altar, knocked the Canadians out of the way and there were four hours for anybody got there. Well, that only happened the first week or so and the next year that didn't happen. Canadians sitting on the front pew the altar call came, they locked arms and said, nobody's getting by us, we're getting to the altar first. Because there's a certain level of experience that says, if you want to be touched by the hand of God, get where the hand of God is going. Right? If you want to stand under the faucet when God turns on the faucet, get to where the faucet's at. You know, if you want to be where God is moving, then move yourself to where he's at. And these guys who were standing around in the marketplace, you know, they were standing, they may be in the, in the corners, they were, you know, kind of sleeping against there and kind of dozing off instead of being out front where, where, the, where the owner of the vineyard was saying, okay, guys, I need a truckload of fellas today because we're tying grapes and who's with me? And the whole rush went and these other guys, well, oh, what, what just happened? Get to where God is going if you want to be a part of the kingdom in these days. Okay, settle down. <sighs> they said no one hired us. Maybe they had no experience. Maybe they had no training. Maybe, maybe no one had helped them before. Uh, maybe they had a difficult past. Maybe, maybe there, were, there were burdens and, and that they were carrying, and, and maybe there were things you know, that, were, that were a part of their life and, and part of the suitcase that they were carrying around, the backpack of, of life experiences that they were putting on their shoulders, and they were going to God with all this, all this worry and care and trouble and trauma and saying, Lord, I'm not really, not really useful for anything, but you know, I'm here. If you need me, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll stand here and I'll hold somebody up, but Lord, I can't talk. Sing, play, go, be, you know, pray, do whatever. But, I, but I'm here. But I got my backpack. My backpack's coming with me. Maybe there was a difficult past that somehow they had been injured and somehow they couldn't stand up anymore and somehow they couldn't get to the line. All they said was, no one's hired us. First question, to understand the principles of the kingdom. What are you doing? Why are you standing around doing nothing? That's a little harsh, isn't it? That's a little harsh. <clears throat> but that's what Jesus said there. He says, why have you been standing here all day long doing nothing? 
That's the first principle to understand. Their response was, we didn't know where to go. We didn't know how to start. We didn't feel we could just show up at your gate and start working in your vineyard. We just didn't know what to do. Right? I mean, I'd, I'd like to show up at a mechanic shop one day, you know, and start fixing Wendell's tractors. That would only ever happen once because he wouldn't have any tractors left. Right? I don't know what to do. You know, I, I, don't, I don't, I mean, I could, I could maybe change a tire. I couldn't change it off the rim, but I could put it, if you had another one there, I could stick that on, you know. I don't have any experience in that, so how do I, how do I do anything? How do I, how do I, you know, where do you start in the kingdom? Well, I'm glad you asked that, you know. Because the second question comes up. Question number two, we find that down in verse 13. <clears throat> and and the, the real crux of it in the sense of understanding the kingdom of heaven is like is found here between, uh, between uh, about verse 9 down to about the end. And it's how the wages are paid out. And so what Jesus is doing here, he's structuring this so we understand how we begin, you know, what we do and how then, then God works with us in this. So down, uh, let's, let's go to about verse 13, I have it marked here. Second question, but he answered one of them. Okay, so afterwards he began, he began giving the money. Let me set the background the stage for you here. Evening came, the work was over, the job was done, and they, they had this pot full of money. And they would go and everybody would get paid every day. Payday was every day. You didn't have to worry about having more a month at the end of the money. Payday was every day. Every single day you got paid. And so they, they gathered around and everybody got their, their denarius, one penny. Now, now, now notice what happened here. When evening came, verse 8, let's look there. When evening came, verse 8, you can follow your Bible just to make sure I'm not leading you astray. The owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, he said, okay, uh, call the workers, pay them their wages, but this is how I want you to do it. I want you to pay first the people who were hired last. Now, if he wanted to avoid conflict, would it not be better to hire the ones, to pay the ones first who were hired first? Get them out of there, you know, and, and not show those guys that he's paying the ones hired last the same wages. So obviously, he's saying, okay, I want to show you some conflict here. I want to show you some truth here. So this is the truth here now of the kingdom of heaven. Okay, so this, he set the stage. He said, pay. He said very specifically, call the workers, pay them their wages, and beginning, though, with the last ones hired and going on to the first. So the workers who were hired about the 11th hour worked one hour. Cool of the evening. Hired on all day long. They had been laying around in the marketplace. All day long they had been chatting, you know, at Tim Hortons over coffee. All day long they have been eating them donuts. All day long they have been standing around. All day long just chatting and talking. And they worked one hour. The guy brings out the pay. Here's your pay. You get full pay. Full day's pay for one hour. And all the other guys standing around there thinking, oh, full? That's, that's like, that's like, we're going to get a penny an hour. And they got all excited. You know, and they began to say to themselves, if he's paying them a penny an hour, oh, what are we going to get, Albert? Come on. I don't know how I'm going to spend all this money. This would be great. We're getting a penny an hour. That's, that's 12 pennies. That's $12. You know, I think of what I can buy. I could buy a side-by-side -side there, Brian. What do you think of that? We go cruising. You know, I, I, I tell you, with, 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 with that much money, that'd be like working 12 days, but we only worked one. Well, 12 days, that's half a month. That means I get half a month's salary for working one day. This would be great. And they opened their envelope. And it wasn't so great because they only had the one penny. You ever in that situation where you had great expectations and you open that crazy envelope, you looked in there and all of a sudden your face falls and you're trying to look, oh, this is great now. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be happy about this now. You know, and you're looking, trying to be happy because you had this great expectation and here it turned out to be a, a chev. <laughs> okay, kidding. But you really thought it was a Ford, you see. You know.
They were upset, these guys. <clears throat> when they received it, it says, verse 11 there, notice this, when they received it, they began to grumble. They began to complain. These men who were hired last worked only one hour. This is not fair. And you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the work and the heat of the day. Now we're coming to a primary principle of the kingdom. And what it is, is our understanding from an earthly perspective is not God's understanding from a kingdom perspective. You see, God makes us equal. Not according to skill or talent or time but by his good pleasure. He says to these guys, he says, can I not do what I want in my kingdom? I am the king. It's my money. I'm going to do what I want. And what I want to do is I want to make everyone equal. I want to pay everyone the same. Not according to what they have earned, but according to what they need. And he knew that everyone needed that money to feed their family, to live, that hope and joy and peace and everything else. He said, this is what I want. This is what I'm about. This is what the kingdom is about. It's about equality in the sight of God. <clears throat> so the second question is this. Notice there in verse 13 after all this, he said, didn't you agree to work for this much? Kind of puts me in mind of uh, Jesus with Peter on the shore, John following, and right, remember that story? And and um, Peter looks back and says, "Well, what about this guy?" He said, "That guy's none of your business. The only one you have to concern yourself with is this one, you, yourself, and God. What I do with John, if he's choose, if he, if I, if I choose to that he would remain alive until I return, what's that to you?" nothing to you. It doesn't concern you. The only thing that concerns you is you. And that's what Jesus is saying here again. He's saying to us, he said, the, the thing that concerns you in the kingdom of God is you and him. Don't worry about the person beside you. Don't worry how they're acting. Don't worry what they're saying. Don't worry what they're doing. Only worry about your life and your relationship with him. That's the thing that concerns you. We have a global perspective now um, in the Church of the Nazarene because we're all around the world, right? And, and there's, there's some things that go on. And, and something happened in, in another country that I was aware of and I brought it up to the powers that be and they gently said this, Mark's none of your business. You don't live there. You've got nothing to do with it. You're not involved in it. Leave it alone. I said, but, but listen, that's just not right. That's not fair. This is, it shouldn't be like this. You know, this is what. And he said, no. Concern yourself with you and the kingdom of God as it shows itself through you. Don't worry about. I thought, well, I'm not sure what that means. But coming to this verse, it deals with it directly. And it's as if God is saying, did you not agree to join the kingdom of God through the blood of Jesus Christ and this is what your return would be. You would receive peace. You would receive forgiveness. You would receive an eternity. You would receive a hope, a help, and a heaven. Is that not what we agreed on? Yes, Lord, that's what I agreed on. And don't worry about the rest. Do what I tell you to do. Pick the grapes I tell you to pick. You know, tie up the vines that need that are falling down. You know, cut off the dead wood. And just do what you're told because you will get your reward that we agreed you would get. Don't worry about anyone else. This is what the second question is. Did you not agree to work for a certain wage? Take your pay and go. I want to give the man who, who was hired last the same as I gave to you. Don't I have that right? See, that's the, the next question. Does God not have the right to do what he wants to do? Now, think about that for a minute. But Lord, that doesn't make sense to me if you do that. Do you ever ask that question? I've asked that question, you know, when a small child's dying in the hospital. Lord, this is not right. 
Lord, I, 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 don't, I, don't think, I don't think I can put up with this. What are we going to do about it? You know, can I not do how and what I want to do, when and how I want to do it? I am God, he says. <clears throat> but Lord, how am I going to say anything to anybody? How am I going to explain this? What am I going to say? It doesn't matter what, you know. You just do what I tell you to do, and I'm going to work out the rest. I am God. You see, we want to put, and we want to express our level of equality, earthly speaking, and, and impress that on the kingdom of God. And God says, no, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. You know, I am the sovereign king. And that's why every Sunday I pray that same prayer. Maybe, maybe you didn't notice that I pray that, but I pray that same prayer because I want to acknowledge to him that he is the sovereign creator of all that is. And you know what? Even though I don't understand it, I will submit myself to his authority because he is God. He asked this question, don't I have the right to do what I want to do? Don't you acknowledge that I have the right to do? I will lead you to the valley of the shadows of death. But do I not have that right? It's God. And then he goes on and he adds to that question and he says down there, the last part of verse 15, he says, or <clears throat> if I don't have the right, or maybe it's this, maybe you are envious because I'm jealous. So you know what? <clears throat> I looked up envious for, for a spiritual gift, <clears throat> for a fruit of the spirit, envious. Couldn't find it. I did find it, however, in, um, <clears throat> in Galatians chapter 5. And I remember preaching on it one time. And not so long ago. It says, uh, notice here, verse 19 of Galatians chapter 5. I, I'll just read it for you. It says, the acts of the sinful nature are obvious. You can read down through it, then all of a sudden, there is, yeah, yeah, it's there, envy. The acts of the sinful nature are envy. There's a whole bunch of them, but envy is included in that. It's not a spiritual gift. It's an act of the sinful nature. And what <clears throat> the Lord is talking about here in, in uh, Matthew chapter 20, in the context of this, he says, or are you envious because I am jealous? And what, what I interpret this to mean here is that in the kingdom of God, there is a refining process that goes through the kingdom people where constantly we are aware of how God is refining us and if and when there are things in our lives that he brings to our attention that we have to deal with or do you have a problem with my sovereignty he says do you have a problem with submitting yourself to my will do you have a problem with following my will do you have a problem with envy bitterness wrath anger <clears throat> see the thing of it is this Jesus said in verse 1 the kingdom of heaven is like this this is what it's like it's like there's a landowner great wealth a lot of work and he calls laborers into his harvest field and he says you know what we need to gather more laborers in and more laborers in and, and the laborers are us and, and we're standing around and we we're saying but but i don't know what to do because you see see i, I got a full-time job i have to earn a living for my family and i got to do this got to do that got to do something else. and yet the words of jesus come on to us and he says you know what he says the kingdom of heaven he is like an umbrella that's that's that we're we're standing out in the rain and and he's given us the protection and he says what well, all you need to do is when you're at work Take your umbrella and go up beside somebody and say, you know what? See, you're having a pretty hard time. I don't know what's going on at home, but let me share my umbrella of peace with you just for a little while. Or, or you know what? We go into the hospital and there's a family member or there's a, there's a friend. And we say, say, you know what? I, I, I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I just want to extend to you my umbrella that the kingdom of God would settle into your heart through me. You know what, I, I, I don't know, driving down the road, there's somebody with a flat tire, and, and Lord, I've been praying for an opportunity as we drive right on by. Okay, Lord, I understand. That I've got to turn around. And I'm going to extend my umbrella of peace and hope and joy while well, this guy's getting soaked in the rain. Let me share my umbrella with you. 
Why have you been standing here all day long doing nothing? I didn't know what to do. Didn't know how to do it. Didn't know when to do it. I didn't know where to do it. And Jesus says, Will you go also and work in my vineyard? He asked the second question. What have you agreed to work for? Now this is a, this is a in, in closing, this is, a, this is a pretty neat question. What have you agreed to work for in the kingdom? But see, I think of my family. Lord, there's one thing I want. My children to know you. That's what I've agreed to work for. I'll give my life <clears throat> for the kingdom that my children would know you. I don't care what anyone else makes. You can ask for the world. You can ask for countries if you want. I want my children. That's what I've agreed for. Are you envious? I wish I had Delbert's good looks. I wish I had my father's haircut. You know, I, 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 wish, I wish I could talk. I wish I could sing. I wish I could play the piano like my wife. Can't. Took five years of piano lessons and can hardly play a tune. My poor old Mrs. Donkin, if she was alive, she'd shake her head more than she normally did. I wish, I wish, you know, I, I'm envious of, of people who look good and they can talk and they can sing and they can strum a guitar and they got a beard like Brad. I wish. No, God's called me. I might not have the gifts of Billy Graham. I might not look as good as, as whatever. I might not anything else, but he's called me. And I can tie one vine at a time. I can pull the string out one bit at a time. It's what I can do. And I'm telling you something. I'm going to do it. Doesn't matter to me how fast you are down the line. Doesn't matter to me where you're at in growth. I'm going to do it. Because I know that at the end of my day, God's going to say, what did we agree for your salary? And I say, I know what we agreed for. My family. <clears throat> so, would Jesus have occasion to say to you, what are you doing standing around? I think that many of you, he would say, well done. But... This is the first principle of the kingdom of heaven.